Hey, good morning. Mr. Robinson here. So uh, I hope you had a good weekend because I did. Now, listen, um, the weekend is over, though. And guess what? You see that? It's a work day now. Time to work. Time to do, do get some more learning here with civics and economics going on. So this is the beginning of the new unit, which is the executive uh, the executive branch. So we, we already cut, we already studied the first branch, which is the legislative branch. That's Article One. Article Two creates the executive branch, which is headed by the president, which in this case um, is Donald Trump. Today it is. So, anyways, here's a uh, here's some pictures of the presidents. I think this is all of them up through Obama. It looks like you know you got Washington, Adams, Jefferson, Madison, Monroe, Quincy Adams, Jackson, Van Buren, Harrison. I mean, I can name them all. Okay, I don't need I don't need the pictures to name them. I can just name them all. But uh, if you want to know, no, that's not going to be on the test. You're not going to have to name all the presidents. But uh, if you want to know the presidents in order, just uh, you know, look it up. So. Notice something about all, most of these presidents, because they have some characteristics. Most of them, right, are all, they're white, okay? Um, Barack Obama is the only one that is multi-racial. Uh, they're all Protestants, other than John F. Kennedy. He was Catholic. Now, they're all males. So, uh you know, if Joe Biden gets elected, he will be the second non-Protestant person to be elected president because he's also Catholic. But uh, let's just go ahead and get into it. The Article 2, as I talked about, sets up the executive branch. The duty is to carry out or enforce the, the laws of the nation. Remember, the first branch makes the law. This branch is designed to carry out or enforce the law. It's the largest of the uh, the three branches, okay? Um, because there's a lot of employees now. There's different departments within the uh, executive branch as well, which uh, we'll get into later this week. So remember, Article Two sets up the executive branch. Well, here's the different departments. So you have this is what's known as the cabinet, all right? The cabinet departments. So there are 15 of them. Department of Agriculture, Defense, Energy. So all these, and then they oversee um, the different areas. So the president, he appoints member people, he appoints a group of advisors for each department. So each of these departments has a head. The head is called the secretary, Secretary of Labor, Secretary of uh, Defense, Secretary of the Interior, Department of Justice. Now they're headed by the Attorney General, the Secretary of Education. All these have a um a a uh, a leader it's the secretary of each department so this is the cabinet that's going to be a question on the quiz cabinet's a group of advisors the president appoints to help him out considered the leader of the united states so um this is barack obama this is an older power point before donald trump became president and they lead the United States um, on the world stage. In other words, when there's a, a, a summit or a meeting of all the leaders of each country in the world, the president is the one that represents the United States at those, uh, those meetings, those summits. Often considered the most powerful person in the world because America is one of the most powerful countries in the world. Uh, but they cannot run the nation alone. That's why he has a cabinet or a group of advisors, which we just looked at those different cabinet departments. And we're going to study those a lot more. Trust me. So now here's some of the qualifications. Remember, because there are qualifications to be in the Senate as well as the, uh, the House of Representatives, well, there's also qualifications to be president of the United States. And they're a little bit steeper. A little, well, a little bit harder to become president than um, it is to be in the Senate or or House of Representatives. Actually, a lot harder. One, you have to be older. You have to be 35 years old or older to be president. 
a native born citizen, meaning you have to be born in America. Now, there was a conspiracy theory uh, several years ago that Barack Obama, for what really was just being, people were just being racist about it, where people were saying that he wasn't born in America. Well, came to find out he was born in America. If you remember Alexander Hamilton, one of our founding fathers, he's on the the uh, $10 bill, I believe, he was Secretary of the Treasury. He could not be president because he was born in a, on a Caribbean island. He wasn't born St. Kitts, I think. He wasn't born in America. So a constitution, that's a qualification. You have to be born in America. 35 years old or older, so there's, that's John F. Kennedy at the time, and he still may be, I think he is, the youngest person ever to be elected as uh, president. I think he was in his early 40s. I'm not sure, maybe 42, 43. Uh, Donald Trump is the oldest person to be elected president. He was, I think he was 70 when he was elected. They have to have been resided in the U.S. for four, for the last 14 years. So that's different, obviously, than um, the, the Congress and the Senate as well. These are just characteristics. These are not qualifications. And I mentioned that earlier. In other words, these things, they're not qualifications. They don't have to be a, uh, it doesn't, doesn't have to be true of the person for them to be president. It's just stuff that has, uh, has been characterized. It's been a characteristic, a common characteristic of most presidents. Only one non-white, remember, Barack Obama was multiracial. All have been, all but one have been Protestant Christians. The only one was I talked about John F. Kennedy. Most have college education. And you don't have to be college educated to be president, but most have been college educated. Uh, for instance, I don't, I'm pretty sure George Washington, he didn't have a college degree. Uh, the last president, it was actually in the 20th century, Harry S. Truman, did not have a college uh, degree. I'm pretty sure he graduated high school, but he didn't have a college degree. Many have been lawyers. Well, why is that important? It's important, sorry, important because um, the, a lawyer has to know the law. What is the supreme law of the land? The Constitution. So they have to know the Constitution. And, um, and then by knowing the Constitution, they would know essentially what their job, the outline of their job is because they would have to know the second article of the Constitution. All have been males. So we've had females that have ran for president before, most recently in the, um, well, the Democratic Party had had a, uh, in their primary race, had a, a couple females. But the, the only time I believe a female has been nominated by a major party was in 2016 when Hillary Clinton ran for, uh, for president. Presidential term, and this is important. So they are elected through the Electoral College. And this is, this is uh, students sometimes get confused about this. The elect in the Electoral College, each state gives, uh, typically, there's only two states that don't do this, they typically give all their electoral votes to the candidate with the most votes in their state. So it's winner take all. So it doesn't matter, for instance, look at North Carolina right there. 15 electoral votes, okay? So this this pres this time in the election, you have Joe Biden and Donald Trump running. Well, if Donald Trump beats Joe Biden by one vote in North Carolina, he gets all 15 of those electoral votes. Same way, if Joe Biden wins by one vote, he gets all 15 of those electoral votes. So it's it's winner take all in the uh, electoral college system. And sometimes people see this as a flaw with the electoral college is that it doesn't always reflect the popular vote. For instance, last time, Hillary Clinton got more votes than Donald Trump got. More, more people in America voted for Hillary Clinton and they voted for Donald Trump. But because of these winner take all uh, in, the, in these various states, Donald Trump won the Electoral College. And this has happened. This, I mean, this isn't the only time it's happened. Not 
uh, not just this last election. It happened in 2000, um, 1896, 1824, I think was the other one. So it's happened before where the person who wins the most votes doesn't necessarily win the, um, the electoral college. Uh, four-year terms. So the president serves four years. Remember, the House of Representatives serves two years. Senate serves six years. President serves four years. Uh, limited to serving two terms. So this goes along with the 22nd Amendment. And the way I remember that is 22nd, two terms. Uh, you cannot, a president can only serve two terms as a president. And this, in fact, every president besides one has served two terms or less, two elected terms. The only one that served more than two terms was Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And uh, he served four terms, or he was elected to four terms, be and that was before this amendment was passed, okay? So you're gonna to need to know that for the quiz, Franklin Roosevelt. The vice president, there's uh, Vice President Joe Biden. When he was, he's not vice president now, but he was uh, for eight years. He was. So they are officially the head of the Senate. Now they remember they don't have many duties in the Senate. Basically, all they do is vote um, to break a tie. The main responsibility is to be ready to replace the president. So this goes along with the um, the Twenty Fifth Amendment, I believe, and that is presidential succession. So you have the president, the vice president, and then the speaker of the house. So this kind of came up recently. Donald Trump was in the hospital, right? Well, if he would have been incapacitated or if he would have got so sick as to where he couldn't make decisions to govern the, the nation, then Mike Pence, who is our vice president, would have taken over those duties. They're usually heavily involved in the policies pursued by the president. So, again, they are like, they're kind of the president's buddy. They're from the same party. Now, when the country was originally founded, the our founding fathers didn't account for political parties. So, basically, the guy who was runner-up in the election was the vice president. So, that didn't really work as well. Now, you have a president and a vice president on the the uh, the party ticket when they run for office and they must meet the same qualifications as the president well why because they could become president if the president something were to happen to the president and the vice president becomes president so he has to meet those same qualifications or she 25th amendment and like I, I mentioned you have the vice president or the president the vice president and then the um, the speaker of the house and on down and basically, um, there's it goes all the way through, all way way on down. I think after that, it's, you're going to have like Secretary of State, but yeah, it's right there. And one of the big things is none of these people are. There's never an instance where all these people are together in one spot. Well, why does America do that? Because if God forbid something were to happen or another country were to drop a bomb on a gathering of all these people, then who's going to run the president? Somebody has to be left out um, in order for, somebody has to be left out in, in order, in case something were to happen so that that person who's left out can then run the country if something were to happen. Uh, and so that's just the presidential succession. There's a picture of John F. Kennedy, the last president we've had to die in office and he was assassinated all right so that's it now the uh, answers to the quiz are uh, they're basically on here they're on the powerpoint i'll address them in the video as well uh, the quiz i probably won't give you an assignment tomorrow so the quiz is uh is, is not due till sunday night but you can work on it until then um like i said i probably won't give you an assignment tomorrow just to give you guys time to catch up on your work and um, this is basically the last week that I'm going to sign I'm going to have assignments on the first quarter of uh, of, of your grades because I'm so I'm going to try to give you guys next week I'm going to give out assignments they'll just go on next quarter 
So I'm going to try to give you guys also next week the time to catch up on any assignments you're missing. Now, I'll hold a Google Meet on Wednesday. I'll post the link where you can uh, click on that in case you want to talk to me about any assignments or anything you're missing.